Come on, brothers and sisters, we want to give all praise and glory to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Shah, peace, mercy, and blessing be upon you, brothers and sisters, throughout the four corners of the earth that are waiting diligently at the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Shah, Hamashiach, that has given us uh, the earnest of the kingdom, which is the Holy Spirit, in order that we may be able to have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and be able to overcome in this current age until the end of the, uh, until the time of the uh, refreshing of, of the kingdom of Israel. So today, we're going to go uh, even further into what we talked about before. We talked about the, court, uh, the lesson that the brother Aaron did concerning spirit, soul, and body. What we want to also deal with is just kind of going even further, just into dealing with just the, you know, basically one's death, burial, and the resurrection, what happens after one dies, the resting place, and basically the coming as we are the elect. What happens after that? Right. Uh, concerning the judgment. Okay, so what we want to do is make sure that brothers and sisters have proper understanding that they're not being misled by basically uh, scripture, by basically people that are twisting scriptures, omitting scriptures, and adding to it. We're just giving you precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little, that your understanding may be open. So, go ahead and start. This is, uh, this is Isaiah 57, starting from the top. The righteous perishes, and no man lay it to heart, and merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. He shall enter into peace, they shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. Now this is pertaining unto those who live those righteous and, and godly lives. They go to a destination of rest upon their death. When the Most High says that they're taken out, that's speaking of the death. And this is speaking of the righteous. And he puts them in a place of rest. Now, when you look at that place, that place is known in the Hebrew as Sheol. Or in the Greek, it's known as Hades. And this is where all the righteous will go to rest upon their death. And so likewise, on the other side of that, you will see individuals who are not on that right on that righteous side, they would go to a place also. But it wouldn't be, in a sense, a restful place for them. Because, you know, they, they've been opened up to see what the future judgment is. And so those guys wouldn't be in a restful, peaceful place. Right. They would be tormented in their minds because they know what's about to happen in the near future for them. Yep. It's like Lazarus and the rich man. It's all, it all links up. Mm-hmm. Lazarus and, and, and the rich man have two different experiences. Yep. Upon going into Hades, yep. also known as Shoal. Yes. Again, that particular parable is red letter. Yep. Remember, it came from Yahweh Shai. So any one of y'all that want to omit, take away from the word, you already know what the judgment is. Come on. So if you're going to come out and say that, that Hades is not talking about Hades, it's not talking about that, then you need to go ahead and tell us what word is talking about and where that location is. Exactly. Okay. So the brother's going to go into the, the, uh, the rest even some more. So go ahead. Book of Second Ezra, chapter four, and verse uh, thirty-four. Right. Thirty-four. And he answered me, saying, "Do not those hasten above the Most Highest? For thy haste is in vain to be above Him." For thou hast much exceeded. Did not the souls also of the righteous ask questions of these things in their chambers, saying, How long shall I hope on this fashion? When cometh the fruit of the floor of our reward? Bye, guys. Yep. Good. Yeah. 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 That's it. Yeah. Yeah, so basically they're asked the, these are the souls that are resting in their chambers, meaning that they're in their resting place. Mm -hmm. And they're basically waiting on the coming mm -hmm. of the kingdom. They're wanting to know when is it going to be set up. Because they're, they're, they're staying and says, we're, how long are we going to remain in this fashion? Yeah. Meaning how we're going to remain in this particular condition. Right. You're not in the everlasting tabernacles mm -hmm. at that particular point. You're just not. Yep. Okay? So they want to know when is the coming when is the time going to come? Now, we're going to go into the precept that coincides with this very exact one. This is Revelation chapter 6. And starting at verse 9. 
And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Those are the ones that were, were, were asking. Yep. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto them, every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest. Rest. He. He. The brother was brought out early mm -hmm. in 57. Yet for a little season unto their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Okay? Mm -hmm. So basically, that right there shows you that when one mm -hmm. is resting, their soul is in a separate place. They're not yet resurrected from the dead. That's right. See, if they were resurrected from the dead, they would no longer be resting. That's right. They would no longer be in that rested state, waiting for the coming, mm -hmm. waiting for the end. Right. If the end already came and you've been resurrected from the dead, you're no longer in the altar of the souls. <laughs> Play. This stuff is, is, is crazy. I'm talking, these guys is push pushing the scriptures. I'm going to be very careful. Now, did you have a precept? Uh, and just, to, just to let you, you guys know, like the brother brought out the chambers. Every soul goes to the same destination. You got to remember that. Every soul goes to the same destination. But the conditions are different from the ungodly versus the godly. This is Sirach 48 and 4. O Elias, how wast thou honored in thy wondrous deeds, and who made glory like unto thee, who didst raise up a dead man from death, and his soul from the place of the dead, by the word of the Most High. So everybody's soul goes to a place, the place known as Sheol in the Hebrew or Hades in the Greek. Right. You know, you guys, you guys really gotta uh, start to look at these scriptures and, and and check the precepts to get that understanding. Because you know, some of your teachers are not um, or haven't ever touched on these these things before, and so you just continuously run with them without understanding. So when brothers bring a class out about this, you come back with these these idiotic precepts that you have no understanding of, and then you look even more foolish, man. Yeah. You know, you, we got to be wise in everything that we do in, in this uh, in this walk. Yeah, then you're adding to the scriptures. And you're adding to because the scriptures. You don't want to, you don't want to, you're, you're, you've been, you have a train of thought that has told you that there is no place of the dead, there is no resting place there, the only resting place that you go is in, is in, the, is in the kingdom of heaven, but the word in the Hebrew is a very direct language. Yeah. If it was going to be heaven, it would say what, Shemayim. Right, exactly, exactly. And, Which and, would have been really the third heaven. Uh-huh. As it's called also, uh, you know. So they didn't go, it's not up there. Yep, it's not up there, it's man. It's not up there. Because you guys always, you know, many of you guys, you know, you, you, you keep um, you keep joining the soul and the spirit as one. Yep. And that's that's your first mistake. If, if you understand in the Hebrew that that spirit, the, the Hebrew word for spirit is rawak, and then you go and look up soul, there's a Hebrew word for soul, which is napash. Mm -hmm. There's two different right. words for two different things. The spirit and the soul are separate things, man. It's not the same. Yeah, the reason why we have to let brothers and sisters know, because, you know, you got to know what happens when somebody passes away that believe and have the comfort and hope of the scriptures that they'll be raised up on the last day. Right. Even in fact, that's part of the reason why the um, apostles back then were willing to be martyred because they understood the, that the Most High was going to resurrect them. Yeah. And even that's the reason why Jehovah Shah was willing to die. Yeah. Because he knew that he was going to be brought back. Yep. To, to, in order to fulfill the promises of the scriptures. Because he had to be the first one to go through it. And then that would allow him to raise up every other man on the last day unto resurrection of life. That's right. Okay, now this is a First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Because in the world, when a lot of people pass away, a lot of people, they don't have the understanding 
of the of of them of the um of these their loved ones coming back. Right, right. So that's why you have that term YOLO. These people don't believe that there's another time in life. They believe that this is it. And when someone passes, they take it too hard because they don't have a proper understanding. Mm -hmm. So this is what Paul is telling them that they that they don't that they have hope. Now it says here for uh, verse 14, for if we believe that Yahweh died and rose again, even so them which uh, which sleep in Yahweh Shai will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive are and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and we shall ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. See, you see, shall be raised into the air. See, his, that's, I mean, a lot of the stuff is, is plain to you, man. How are you going to be raised into the air if you was already there? If you're already there. Because, it, cause, see, that, that's, that way, that's where the understanding is lacking, man. Yeah, because the brother brought out the precept about... Uh, the Lord descending. You get that? Is that in Galatians four? Oh uh, no, that's in uh, Ephesians. Ephesians four eight nine. Yeah, yeah Ephesians four eight nine. Yep. Okay. And then we're gonna get. Um, we're gonna get. Um, um, what, what, well, the whole second edge is set uh, two and forty. Second edge two. Yeah, two and forty. Thirty-nine ish. Oh, it's closed on the weekend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a uh, uh, Ephesians four and eight. It says, "Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, speaking of Yahweh Shai, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended." What is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Mm -hmm. Now, he, this is where his soul went, brothers and sisters. Right. Verse 10. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. That's plain and simple, man. This is, this is, uh, this is childlike. Uh, um, reading, so to speak. Mm -hmm. your, your young child should be able to understand this. But see, according to the scriptures, like Yahweh Shah stated, he said, I thank thee, Father, that thou hast not revealed this unto the wise and prudent, but unto babes. So you, you hear a lot of people who are teaching and talking about hell not being what it what it is and not understanding what Sheol is, not understanding what Gehenna truly is, the wise and prudent are not going to understand, but he gave it unto the babes, man. Yep. Because it's a simple concept. It's not super deep that y'all, the way y'all trying to make it be, man. It's that, that's just the facts of it. Now, now, now let's get this. Uh, brother just brought that up. Why do you have to bring that up? Because the like faction fashion will all happen to those that believed in Yahweh Shai and died. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to go through that same process because the, the Yahweh Shai already completed that process. Right. So this is the reason why you have that hope in being raised from the dead and being being reunited with the rest of your brethren mm -hmm. and, and basically uh, receiving the kingdom. Okay? We're being of the elect. Yep. Now this is um, 1 Corinthians 15 Starting at verse, verse 12. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there be there is no resurrection of the dead? Which there are some that say that. Mm -hmm. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ not risen. If Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain? And your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God because right. we have testified of God that He raised up Christ. Uh oh, He right. raised up Christ from Sheol. 
yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. If Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Come on, man. But see, we and believe. He said he raised up, and he raised up because we believe he raised up. But right. see, a lot of people that don't believe, that say they believe in Yahweh Shai don't believe he raised they up. Believe he went to, they believe he sat immediately at the right hand of the yep. Father immediately. Yep, they, they don't believe that because he... Because if you believe yep. that he went to heaven, yep. the only seat in heaven he has is at the right hand of the Father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's wait, right. Wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> hold on, bro. Hey, man. Come so on. that means when he died, according to y'all, yep. yeah, yeah, he yeah. had to have sat to the right hand of the Father immediately. Yeah, exactly. And then remember now, when he came out of the tomb with Mary Magdalene, he said, "Touch me not, for I have not ascended to my Father." Hey. Man. So uh, you telling me when he was raised from the dead, he had he even said to no, know, "I ain't even got to see my." I ain't father even yet. seen my father yet. <laughs> but according to this, according to a guy. In, in DMS, <laughs> your soul goes back to the throne of the Father. Ooh. It's in front of him praising you. Yeah. Hey, that ain't true, bro. That ain't <laughs> true, bro. You got you to gotta check that. Hey, check the scriptures over again, bro. <laughs> man, bro. That's not, that's not a true statement, man. Bro. <laughs> hey, hey, look, we just being three brothers over here helping other brothers out, man. <laughs> you gotta see the father in your, in your elders teaching, man. Yeah, that's right. Listen, your elders is not gonna do lessons addressing. They don't make you do it and sacrifice and do it yourself. Because they know that if they get into this, all of y'all have to watch it. Oh. You see, there's one thing with a few brothers watching mm -hmm. the videos and they respond on the comment boards individually. Right. It's one thing when your elders actually gotta do it. Yep. And then all of y'all gotta check it, the doctrine. See, see, when when it started off with the baptism, y'all uh, people rejected it. Mm -hmm. But see, then the whole mindset of baptism turned because at first it was like nobody, you don't have to do that. But then as we pushed it, things started to change. Oh, it's optional. But before it was nothing. You, you don't have to do it at all. What is what is it to do? What what is it gonna do for you? You still gonna be the same so and so or whatever. But now we hitting the last parts of this thing. This eternal judgment. Hey man, what y'all gonna do with this? Because this is one. Of, this is the heaviest part of the six principles of the principles of Yahweh Shot, man. And it's gonna open up some doors that brothers ain't gonna want to look in. Yep. They gonna want. They gonna be like, man, close that door, man. I don't want to look at that. It's like a scary movie. Man. It is, bro. Yep. It's like a scary movie. You don't want to watch it, man. But this is what you have to. Like it says, we gotta warn. Yep. You gotta warn. The people of what's to come. Yep. Uh -huh. Those times are not going to come back and not allow this thing not to come out. It had to come out. Yep. And it had to come out this way. Yep, that's right. Now, this is verse 17, second, the first Corinthians 15 and 17. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which fall asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope, in Mashiach, in Christ, we are all of men most miserable. But now in Christ, risen from the dead, now is Christ risen from the dead, and become the first fruit of them that slept. Mm -hmm. For since by man cometh death, by man come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Right. But every man in his own order, Christ, the first fruits, afterwards they that are Christ at his coming. Come on, man. Okay. Now we're gonna get that about those um Yeah, get the we can get second then we get uh, Revelation seven and eleven. Oh actually, we could probably get Revelation twenty. Revelation and then we can go back here. Yeah. You know, just deal with yeah. the judgment, deal with the book of life judgment and all that. And then we can go here to culminate the, the, the peace. Because it'll make more sense in that order. So go to Revelation 20 and start to like about verse 12. And then and then we can kind of show this. This is uh this is uh Revelation 20 and 12. 
And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Man, this is so heavy right here. I, I want to look at, look at what is stating here. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Not only that, the sea gave up the dead. Uh, what else? What else was it? Death and hell. Death and because, yeah, death. because you're gonna have people yep. that are in this that are dead in the sea. Yep. And then it says, uh, yeah, the sea gave up the dead, which were in the depths of the sea. Death and hell delivered up the dead, which were in them. The souls that were in Hades. Come on, ah. Uh, that were in that were already passed away. They had to be risen up on that day of judgment. So it lines exactly up with the resurrection. Both the just and the unjust. Right, so that means there's no reincarnation. Right. You're that, not going to be wicked in this side and no. then get into the kingdom on some back door as a baby. Exactly, exactly. So you can't you can't use the cycle. Oh, keep reading. That was the end of it. That the was end the end of it? Okay. Yeah, yeah that, I went out. to go to uh, uh, Revelation 21 and 7. But I believe 7, 8, and 9. Uh, uh, he that overcome it shall shall inherit all things and I shall be a son unto him so well we can, we can just drop this and say he that overcome it shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son but the fearful now you're looking at two you're looking at two different aspects here you're looking at the godly and the ungodly but the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars man liars who lie on the scriptures Mm -hmm. shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death so we just read earlier. come on and, man and the power of death and hell of Hades that same power force is going to be in that lake yep. it's going to transfer with them the ones that was wicked on that other side of the great gold fix yep. they're going to right. go up in, Come in Gehenna, yep. with the same thing, but with the eternal torment, tor uh, torment, yep, eternal punishment. This eternal man. This is a heavy. That's, that's a heavy piece, bro. That's a heavy piece. When you think about that, because see, a lot of times you, you, you brothers and sisters, you can I mean, your brothers, you constantly say, "Well, where is hell? Where is hell?" And so, where, where's where's the people in hell right now? See. The hell and of torment and, and fire and brimstone and, and you know where your body is gonna be destroyed at you're not remember saying, your body is not really there in Hades. Exactly. Your body is your not soul. there. Your soul is there. Right. But what you brothers are saying is where is hell and you're talking about the eternal torment hell. Uh-huh. It's not here yet. It's not here yet. But when it appears, that's when it'll be here. Exactly. So you, that's where your, your understanding is, is, is darkened because you're thinking, oh, oh, that person died. Now he in, he in hell burning forever and everything right now. No, that's not the case. All those souls are in Hades or in Sheol right now. And then when that eternal judgment comes, that Gehenna is going to appear. Yep. And then those souls that transgress yep. when they yet had liberty yep. must know it after death by pain yep. will be cast into that lake of fire that's right that's how it's yeah. worked yeah because in the revelation they don't use the word Gehenna. Yep. exactly they, use it, they call it lake of fire they call it lake of fire they call it lake of fire mm -hmm. and remember the spirits the evil spirits know that that's where they're going to be tormented yeah they're going to have to go there too that's why when yahushua yep 
had them pushed out of the pigs, out of the swine. Yep. They said, they have thou come to torment us before the time. Come on, man. Because the, those spirits are also going to be put in there. Satan and his angels. Satan yep. and his angels. Right? Satan and his angels. Yep. <laughs> They're going to be cast in there the too. The lying spirits. Yep. That's, that's deceiving some of y'all. And that, oh man, man. That, that's heavy, bro. That's some heavy. That's some heavy stuff. <laughs> Speechless, man. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, man, that's so heavy, bro. Man, that's some heavy stuff, bro. So, for, so for the righteous, <laughs> that's why we gotta switch. We gotta switch a little bit. <laughs> we're probably gonna bring out Second Ezra chapter two and forty-two, uh -huh. and then I'm gonna bring, and then we're gonna bring out what happened to those souls, those altars, the ones that was asking in Revelation six eleven. When will you when you judge the earth? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. God tried to do a twister. Yeah. Yeah. Tried to do a very uh, sleight of hand, a cunning craftiness. Yep. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yep. He tried it. Tried it, man. This is Second Ezra, chapter two, and verse forty-two. Now, mind you, this includes those that were resurrected from the dead and, and those that were alive, according to First Corinthians, Thessalonians four and thirteen. That's right. Okay. So this is like. What happens after you're risen from the dead, your soul comes up, and it inherits the everlasting tabernacles, uh -huh. mm -hmm. according to 1 Corinthians 15. The new body. The new bodies. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to meet with the Lord. This is when the elect is sealed, which didn't happen in the fifth seal. It didn't happen in Revelation 6 and 11. Mm -hmm. The elect wasn't sealed, man. Go ahead, huh? This is 2 Ezra, chapter 2, verse 42. I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Sion a great people, whom I could not number, and they and they all praised the Lord with songs. And in the midst of them there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all of the rest. And upon every one of their heads he set crowns, and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? He answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing, and put on the immortal, mm -hmm. and have confessed the name of God. Now are they crowned and received songs. Then, then said I unto the angel, What young person is it that crowned them, and giveth them palms in their hand? So he answered and said unto me, it is the Son of God, whom they have confessed in the world. Then, then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. Come on. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Yeah, so, so that right there is, is clearly not altars. Mm -hmm. The Revelation 6, this is not the picture. <laughs> right? No, right, right. Souls is not doing this. <laughs> right, right. Right. <laughs> Didn't they say they put on the immortal? They put on the immortal. Uh, get First Corinthians 15, bro. Oh, bro, shoot. You I know what I'm talking that, about? I had that joke. Hold on, hold on. You're going to see what the immortal is talking about. Because <laughs> they already were given white robes because they was of the elect. The yep. souls that was restless, many y'all are clean. That's what it meant when it said in, four, six, uh, in, in Revelation 6 and 11 that they were given white robes. Because yep. that means y'all already of the elect. We just got to get your other brother sealed. Yep. Some of them going to die too. But yep. just wait. Then this happened. Yep. So go ahead, Doc. This is 1 Corinthians 15 and 51. Come on, Doc. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump, sh for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. How are they raised up when they're already dead? Come on, bro. I thought there were altars already. There was. Come on. <laughs> Verse fifty-three. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And what else? And this mortal must put on immortality. Brother, just read it. Come on, man. So when the corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall Same be brought. Ashes, man. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written: Death is swallowed up in victory. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
opened up earlier, one of the scriptures we opened up was 2 Answers 4 and 35. They said, how long will we remain in this fashion? Come on, bro. We were still resting in Hades. In Hades. In Shoal, the soul. Waiting to be mm -hmm. made immortal. Yep, that's right. They were still, they, now, now this is when it happens. Yep. That's right. See, you got to put this thing together, man. It's, it's not as, it, you know, you can't just take one part or one aspect and just fly with that. Man, this thing is intertwined, man. It is. The, the Most High has created a spiritual construct uh -huh. that you have to link together, man. Yep. If you trying to take the construct apart and give it to the people, you're going to give them the wrong doctrine. Yeah, that's right. And that's yeah. what's happening. Yeah, that's and they right. got to know this to put fear in, in folks, man. Yep. Yeah. To try to steer them the right way. Yeah. yeah. That's yep. that's what that's there. That's what it's there for. Exactly. To put fear in you, man. Yep. That's why you guys you out preach, there with your yeah. death upon brothers. Yeah. You guys well, don't fear, man. You don't you, fear. If you're preaching at all, Israel, you come gonna get saved. Yep. yep. That's no fear in There's it. No man. fear, man. We done talk. Hey, tell them about the brother you talked to that left the so and so camp when you the dude. Uh, 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 They go into the world. They go into yeah. Because they, the doctrine really says they're gonna get it because they Israel. Yep. yep. And, and then when you try to when you try to relate it to them, they they, they can't. They don't. They like, hey, I got it. I, uh -huh. I, I, I I got. It. I don't need nobody else to tell me nothing because I know. So when they when their minds like that, man, you know that they've been blocked. Yep. Yep. That, that that's what is termed as spiritual blindness. Blindness has been imparted upon a lot of the Israelite brothers out here. Yep. And it's a predestined thing too, bro. Mm -hmm. It's it's and that's mandated from the most high. Yep. And that's why the fear of the most high has to be in you because you can be a brother in the truth and in the know and then you can lose that thing. That's that's a fearful thing in itself. Because the end result of a of a blind brother is that that lake of fire, man. Yeah, so we're going to get this real quick. This is uh, Revelation 7, the second verse. Uh, now, as you know, this is talking about after, after the uh, 144,000 was sealed. So this is uh, verse, we'll start at verse 13. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? Robes, whence come they? And I answered him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in the temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall never hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them into unto living fountains of water, and God shall wipe all the tears out of their eyes. Now, when you go into that verse 4, it says, I have a num I heard a number of them which were sealed, and the number of them is 144,000. And then as you go down to verse Yeah, verse 9. And this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all the nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues stood before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and having palms in their hands. The brother read that in 2 Ezra chapter 2. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, so this is after, because the, you tried to, this is what y'all do. You try to correlate what was happening in this fifth seal with what was happening in the sixth seal. Mm-hmm. That's what he tried to do, yep. Okay. And see your timelines were off. Mm-hmm. Can't do that, Jack. <laughs> Jump man. <laughs> so the brother gonna bring out we, we were talking about this earlier. The brother's gonna bring out Ezekiel 13 and 9. <laughs> uh, the book of Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 9. And my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity. And that divine lies. Yeah, so oh there's no Hades, there's no hell. Man, you guys don't know what you're talking about. You guys are bugged out. 
that's right. But, but look what look what the Lord said. They shall not be in the assembly of my people. Woo. Neither shall they be written, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. Come on, man. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. And ye Woo. shall know that I am the Lord God. Man. So does that that's clear cut to all Israel shall be saved. Yep, yep. I was just about right? to say that. Yep. Your name not in the book, period. Yep. yep. So you're gonna still be able to just walk up in the kingdom and your name not in the book. That so, goes to show that you don't have no understanding of, of that Romans eleven, man. Uh-huh. All Israel shall be saved. You have no understanding of it, man. Yeah. You yeah. have no understanding. Ooh, man. Go this back and look at some of the old lessons and clear it up for you, Nico. I ain't got time to get into it with you. Yep. This is uh. Hey, hold on. Uh... I got a couple of them. This is second. This is uh Revelation chapter twenty-two and verse. 27 and there shall in no wise enter into anything wait hold on let me do this because the land the brother just brought up they cannot enter into the land right yeah, yeah. so let's go to uh, Revelation 22 we've been dealing with the temple but we know that the people Israel is a people in the place this is, second, uh, this is uh, Revelation 22 and 23 and the city had no need of lot of sun Neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did light it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved should walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. Which, if you go to uh, Isaiah chapter 60, it tells you how the, the, the forces of the Gentiles shall be brought unto the city, unto yeah. the unto Israel, unto the elect, unto mm. right. Yeah. And the gates of it shall not be shut all day, all at all by day, for there shall be no night day. So basically, like it says in Isaiah 60, the gates shall be open continually, right? Mm -hmm. And they shall bring the glory and name honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter in, into it anything that the father neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Come on. Right. Now, this is continuing going. I'm sorry, that was uh, 21. That was Revelation 21 to 27. Now, this is Revelation 22. Revelation chapter 22, and we'll start at verse. Um, 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to all as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. You can only enter into the gates of the city, of yes. this special city of Jerusalem, if you're of the elect. Come on, man. Right. Not because you're, I'm an Israelite. Right. Like the brother just read. The bro yeah, what the brother right. just read. You're not going to be written in the house of Israel. That's right. So Ooh. the gates, the, the 12 tribes. You ain't going to be written in there. That. You ain't going to be on, on that list. Yeah. Right. Don't listen to these people out here, man. This is your soul's on the line. Yeah, yeah, your, right. Your, your, your eternal destiny is on the line. Yeah. You want to keep listening to these guys because they taught 35 years? Then, I, then guess what? When you get in there, make sure you have a seat right next to them. Yeah, right, right, right. right. You better be asking for a seat right next to them so you can be complaining about how you're born in torment because a man that you trusted in led you there. Come on, huh? That's right. Verse 15. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. 
Woo! Lying to the that, people. That lie been coming, coming out a lot in the scriptures. It ain't, it ain't no hell. Lies. Mm-hmm. Hey, believe in that. You don't have to have baptism. Lies. Lies. Lie, 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 lie all the time, man. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you guys, man. You guys are thinking that people be passing away and be, them people be down there show that you lied to, be hoping that somebody gonna tell their loved ones and friends right. about the truth. Come on, man. Right. That's why when you look at Lazarus and the rich man, he said, Father Abraham, send Lazarus back. I have five brethren so that he may tell them. And what was Abraham's response? They have Moses and the prophets. But if one father Abraham raised from the dead, they shall believe. Let them hear Moses and the prophets. If they hear them not, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead, man. Right. They ain't going to be persuaded, man. Mm-hmm. And nobody right. going to be persuaded. But this was an individual in torment asking because he know. What the he end wasn't under the assumption no more. He wasn't, he wasn't under under that under that GMS doctrine. His eyes were open <laughs> to the truth. <laughs> His eyes was open to that truth, man. Y'all, all this is gonna lead y'all right into that ditch, man. Yep. That's you the guys is out there wanting to say, oh, our elders, sister, right. elders, that, that you gotta go and mangle and twist the scripture. You gotta go take one precept from another and like, then oh yeah, I'm sorry. merge it with another and act like it's saying a certain thing. They're gonna be like last was man. Eyes gonna open up, but it's gonna be too late. Yep. You're gonna you're gonna realize what's going on, it's gonna be too late. Yep. Just like last. This oh. is this is uh this is first Corinthians two and eleven. For what man knoweth the things of man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Come on. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Ah, oh, man. man. Ooh, bro. Hey. You can't see baptism because that's spiritually discerned. You can't see Hades where the soul goes because that's spiritually discerned. You can't understand Gehenna and the lake of fire because that's spiritually discerned. And you can't understand that death and Hades will be thrown into the lake of fire because that's also spiritually discerned. And that goes out and goes into the blindness. Hey, that's that's all. That's the Most High, man. That's that's that spiritual that's blindness. Right. Yep, that's right, bro. Oh, we can finish it off. We get we get uh, Daniel chapter twelve, verse one and two. <laughs> yeah, <bro. laughs> <laughs> Daniel twelve. This is Daniel twelve. From the top. And at that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake hmm? some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt amen <laughs> if you can't get that Man. in the words of Cedric the Entertainer I don't know what to tell you <laughs> bro don't let these don't let these uh, don't let these, these listen man the most I said of false prophets remember yep. that yep Remember that the Most High raised up false prophets in the wilderness to test Israel. Yep. That's right. Remember that. Mm-hmm. In the wilderness. Don't think he ain't doing it right now, too. Come right. on, bro. So with that, I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah. Peace, mercy, and blessings. The amount of brothers and sisters throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom. Shalom.